Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Victoria's really, my miniature schnauzer's getting into the pond. We're going to do our Bible by the pond. Okay. Uh, turn to Romans. Memory verse. Okay, that we always memorize, but we need to make sure it's not just up here, that we're taking our time to put it down here. That's what these things, that's what these videos are for. They're memory verses, key scriptures that every Christian should know, but we need to make sure we're hiding them in our heart and applying them to our lives. Okay. So Romans 8, chapter 8, verse 28. We're going to read this memory verse. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to His purpose. Now why I chose this verse is, there's teachings out there, and I agree with these teachings, that will teach you that sometimes some things in your life, it's going to happen. It's going to seem like it's bad, but you don't know why it happened, but God does. All things work together for good. Okay? I agree with that teaching, but there's a part of the teaching that some people keep leaving out. They leave out, they cut it out. All things work together for good. So when bad things happen to you in your life, you automatically just say, God's got a plan and He's going to work it out, and you ignore the last two parts of this verse. Okay? Be very careful not to do that. It says to them that love God. The Bible says this is Jesus Christ who is capital G God the Father. Okay, there's only one God, capital G God, the Father, 1 Corinthians 8, 6. If you don't believe that Jesus is God fully and completely, that He's God the Father, then this verse doesn't apply to you, for the Trinitarians out there. The Godhead is the true teaching of Scripture. Jesus is the person, not being, person of the Godhead singular. There's only one person of the Godhead, and that's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is God fully and completely. And he comes and he says, in the book of John, he says, If a man love me, how do we love God? Jesus is God. If a man love me, he will keep my words. And my Father shall love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. What was the second part of that verse? It said, uh, who, to them who are called according to His purpose, we will come and make our abode with Him. The okay. Bible says, I keep saying this time and time again, sanctify them through Thy truth, Thy word is truth. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to Thy word. Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against Thee. I hide God's word in my heart so the life that I'm living can glorify God. It shows that I love God by the life that I'm living. So when it says to those who love God, to those that are called according to His purpose, that's where the all things work together apply to. They connect. You take half away, then you can apply it to anything. What happens to when you're not loving God? When the bad things happen, the chastening of the Lord comes in, it's to get you back on the right track. Okay, now afterwards, I've always told brothers and sisters in Christ this, after the chastening, we thank God for it. Before the chastening, we fear God. We're to fear God and we're to do our best that we're not doing anything to deserve chastening of the Lord. Okay, if it gets to the point where God has to chasten you, in the end, it'll work out for good. It will if it gets you back on the right track. Sometimes people get chastened and they don't get back on the right track. They just keep fighting God. Okay? When, that's why it says to them that love God. When you are failing to love God and you start loving the flesh and you start loving this world, you know, we talk about lately in our studies the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, the lust of other things come in, choke the word, and it become unfruitful. It starts choking you and you stop with the life you're living, you stop showing love for Jesus Christ with the life that you're living. To them that love God, to them that are called according to His purpose. Okay? There are going to be times, brothers and sisters of Christ, also, that you're going to want to go this way, and God says, no, I want you going that way. This way doesn't necessarily look like it's a sin. It's, it doesn't look bad. There's nothing wrong with this direction I'm going. Lord, I want this way. And you try to force it. And bad things happen. You're like, well, God, why do bad things happen to me? God's like, I wanted you to go that way. 
Okay, you look in uh, Paul, when he was preaching the plan of salvation to people, there were certain people that Paul didn't preach the plan of salvation to right away. God's like, they're not ready. And he came back later in another time period when God said, okay, now they are ready, preach the plan of salvation to them. Okay, when he's on the island, you know, he's got the snake that bit him and throws it, and the people on the island that help save him from the shipwreck and everything. He's not preaching the plan of salvation to them yet. They're not ready. Right? There's times in your life, brothers and sisters of Christ, where you're going to want to do something for the Lord, and you're so excited about it, and God's going to say, I don't want you going in that direction. I want you going over in this direction. Okay? We're all going the same direction according to the Bible, but I'm talking about the gifts. God gives us different gifts, different things we can do for the Lord. And He might want you to witness here, and He might say, okay, no, the doors are closed here right now. Don't waste your time. Go over here and witness over here where the doors are open. And you're like, no, Lord, I'm going here. You fall flat on your face. There's no fruit. Nobody gets saved. You say seeds are planted. You're holding them accountable. But what about the doors that were open? God will have to send somebody else in your stead because you didn't obey him and say when he said go this direction because you went that direction. He'll send somebody else. Okay? And bad things could happen to you. And you're like, but, but why? Because you didn't obey the Lord when the Lord said, I want you going this way, not that way. And we're not talking about sin. We're talking about just your walk with the Lord. Lord, do you want me to go here? Do you want me to go there? Do you want me to do this? Do you want me to do that? I'm asking the Lord all the time in my life, what do you want me to do? Okay. And there's times where I push things and they're not as fruitful because I'm pushing it. And there's times where I'm just like, Lord, I'll go the direction you want me to go. And it's very fruitful. Okay. All things work together for good to them that love God to them that are called according to His purpose. If what you're doing doesn't line up with Scripture also, it's not His purpose. It's got to line up with Scripture. Okay. So remember, you got people teaching that. All things work together for good, and they drop the last two parts off. Then you got some people teach, all things work together for good to them that love God. And, you, and that love is just flesh. Fleshly love in these Babel buildings get you on a flesh high and, and get you deceived into thinking that that's loving God. And it's not. Okay? Keeping His Word is loving God. So this is a great memory verse to put in your heart. And always when you memorize it and you, pre and you say it to yourself often, hopefully, you look at the life that you're living. Am I loving God? Am I doing, going the direction that God wants? Or am I being selfish and going the direction I want? It might not necessarily be a sin, but it's the direction I want. It's not the direction God wants. Okay? All things will work together for good. Sometimes bad things are going to happen. I, I, I agree with that. There's times that bad things are going to happen and you won't know why. You might never know why, but God does. Trust the Lord. Ultimately, it comes down to trusting God and His perfect written word. Trust the Lord. So, get this verse memorized, get it in your heart, and make sure you're applying it to your life. So grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching.